In today's video, we're trying to fire up this M57 engine here behind me that we've just done a heap of internal work to and see if we can get it running. So just a quick one, I'm gonna fit up some new injector lines. So they are the leak off lines that connect all the way to the top here and they leak back down into the rail and return to the fuel tank. This is hose from NZ, uh, it's a four mil internal. We got the new PCV valve delete from ASL Mods fitted up. Also got all our injector return lines on. So with all that done, it is finally time to get this thing off the stand, bolted back to the gearbox and then put back onto our homemade stand that we run the engine on. And then we can fit up the intake, seals and things like that and get this thing running. So I've gone ahead and cleaned everything up, the mating surface of the uh, shield here, we've cleaned that one up, uh, we've cleaned the engine side of it up and all, all of that up, flywheel up, bolts up, bolt holes up, all with brake clean, so it's all looking pretty pretty new, and we've got the uh, crank position ring as well all cleaned up, so we can slide that one on, uh, remember that that is the dowel hole. Eight brand new bolts with sealer on them, and that is the part number there from BMW themselves. We're just running them all in by hand first, and then we'll torque them up. Okay, so we've locked the flywheel with the little uh, locking pin here that comes in the timing kit to do the time, timing chains and everything. So I've locked that, so this can't move. So now we're gonna torque them up to 121 Newton meters and with a 19 mil socket. Check out what the engine's telling you to do. I, I mean, you're just gonna have to. We got it all lined up and home. And I took a couple of shims and the old Beamer Jack. Grab that out of the boot before you scrap it. So with that all installed, I've made sure that I can spin, still spin the torque converter by hand. We wanna make sure we've got that. If not, if it's bound up, it means that the torque converter wasn't seated correctly, which I did make that measurement in the last video to make sure that wouldn't happen. Through our access hole in here, we can see that we've got the first thread lined up. So we can install our new bolts that we've got here. That is our part number. Time to torque them up. My bolts are an M10 8.8 .8 grade and they are done up to 45 Newton meters. Now to install the starter motor. Righto, now the fun part, get the engine back on that stand. All right, the engine is finally on. That was a ridiculous amount of work to get it on. I didn't design this stand very well. Really, the rear cross member should have been removable on it so I could pop that up from underneath. And then this front should have been removable so you could slide it underneath a lot easier because there's a lot of sketchy moments where everything's balancing on bricks and if this thing had a topple over, I would have lost it. So anyway, it's now here. I'm gonna have a really big clean up in the shed. Just gonna skip through that because OCD is annoying me that this has been like this for nearly three months. It's finally time to fit the intake manifold back up to the engine. So it is as clean as I'm gonna get it on here and I've scraped everything out. So it's nice and tidy inside. Uh, I am just replacing some seals. I didn't get these because you have to buy them with the steel tube, I believe. And these ones still looked okay. So I'm gonna clean those up. Little tip, take a hundred photos, a thousand photos if you can. I took them of absolutely everything and videos and everything of how this engine went together. So come apart, sorry, so yeah documenting all that really helps putting it back together fresh bag of seals here from asl mods go check those guys out if you need anything they have everything for m57s quick little tip on installing these tubes with the new seal here they are quite hard to press in just by hand so insert that one there 
Got a bolt here, I think it's like an M6 by probably 60 or so, mil long. Slide that seal down on top. I've greased both surfaces a little bit with some rubber grease. Slide on a washer and a nut. I was struggling with this for a little bit and then decided to try this and it actually worked quite well. So you might be thinking, what's the point of wearing gloves when they're both blown out within my last two pair? <laughs> so making do. All right, and then we just gently tighten it up, keeping this seal down in there first. See it bulges out, goes tight, and then let's go. Okay, so having a good visual inspection underneath and on the top here, making sure our seals haven't fell out as we've put it down. We're all okay there. Strangely enough, these nuts here are 11 mil and these bolts at the top are 10 mil and we're tightening them all up to 15 Newton meters. Okay, 15 Newton meters feels way too tight for those top ones, so I'm just gonna go the old school method. Dipstick, O-ring, part number. Next major thing to do is fill up this thing with engine oil. So I've got some uh, castor oil. BMW recommend it. I am going to replace this oil pretty soon anyway, so it was a little bit cheaper than going Penrite. We're also gonna replace this oil filter as well uh, because obviously you do those two together. Now, firstly, you would drain your oil if you're gonna do this, but obviously we've done all that. We've done all this work, so our engine oil is drained. So let's, uh, let's change this filter and then put some oil in it, and then we can fill up that automatic. Okay, 32 mil socket, we'll loosen this up. So this is what's called a cartridge type filter. So it's not your conventional type where you've got a metal housing. Uh, it just uses the filter inside this whole housing instead. We've got that kind of cleaned up a little bit, just wiped some stuff off. Now, uh, there is a couple of O-rings. So you've got the one on the top here, you've got one down sort of near the end here and one at the actual end. Now with the Ryko filter, it does come with that and a sun plug washer, which is pretty damn good uh, for the price of that. I think it's like 25 bucks. So we just need to make sure that our numbers on the bottom here both line up, and they certainly do. And we need to make sure they line up in height-wise and diameter-wise. So yeah, we're looking pretty good there. Rubber grease. Tiny bit on these O-rings. This will help prevent that plastic housing from snapping too once this Gets 10,000 k's old down the track and grabs like no tomorrow. And you can't get it off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Alright, just like that. Put those on. Now we can put our filter down and on. Just a quick wipe out inside. Now the torque setting. It's literally on the top, 25 newton meters. 7.5 liters, roughly, is what you aim for. So I'm gonna put seven liters in. I'll obviously run it and then top it up as needed. Check our fluid level. It's gonna be a tad high because we've gotta fill the filter up anyway. Let's see, we are bang on the money. So using an eight mil Allen key, we can remove this Fill a plug off the side here. I've got this little hand operated oil pump here and I've worked out that 34 pumps of that is equivalent to one litre. Now, when I drained this, I measured how much come out and it was about four and a half litres. So uh, with the work that we've done to it and taking off the oil cooler and stuff, we're obviously gonna get a little bit more of oil, but if I do four and a half litres for now, we can top it up once it's actually in the car. I wasn't counting, whoops. I'll get all this boring stuff taken care of. Glow plug module, fuel lines, electrical, blah, blah, blah. Catch us when it's done. Just like that, it is all hooked up. We're just gonna put a jerry can in the mix, put a battery down on the floor. Uh, excuse the wiring mess, I'm almost embarrassed to show it, but basically I had to go through and figure all this thing out. So let's go over to how I 3D printed this front tool. Basically that 
front uh, seal is double lip install. So it has a face out this way, it has a face on the inside. So basically you need a tool, you don't need one, some people get away without it, to slide it on and put it in home. So I'll show you guys how I did that. Okay, so it's really hard to see here, but I've started from this sketch, gotten to here, and I am still changing it. From some sketches, to a ton of different prototypes, to the final design we've got designed up here. So these seals are very fragile. So I damaged the first one trying to get it on, so I've got a new one. Basically the seal will go over the top of there, and then we'll uh, secure this to the crank with two bolts, and then drive the cup over the top, and then press the seal in. Okay, so these seals have to sit for four hours once they're installed. So first of all, we're going to clean this up because I filled it up with oil. There's a little bit of oil around inside. So just checking, this seal has come oiled, which is really strange. The last one I had, uh, the first, well, the first one I had was not oiled, which is really odd. And even inside the box doesn't look oily. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, that is the part number for it. So placing our seal on the tool, grab two bolts and fasten this down. All right, so we can push our seal back. Mine the long bolts, that's all I had in stock. So we'll just gently work this thing in. So it seals all the way home there. Both sides. There you have it, seal is all installed, absolutely perfect. Nice and flush everywhere. Got a feel, make sure that it's uh, sitting for nice and flush. Let it sit four hours and then we can start up that hot mess. Beautiful, fuel pump is running. So I'll let that do its thing for a little bit. Primer, get all that air out. All right, let's see if it goes again. Uh, I'm not gonna focus too much on the air and the fuel situation because I'm gonna fire this thing up in the cruiser anyway and I'm gonna have to get access to the injectors and do all that stuff anyway and bleed it all because we'll be disconnecting all this. So there's no way of getting around that. There's no point spending two hours here trying to bleed all this up just to run it quickly on camera if we know it runs. So we'll see if it fires up again. If it makes a clunking noise, it's because of the air and the injectors. Alrighty, so that was a super successful test run. Well, two test runs we got in there. Now it's a little banging and clanking around because I've got things not tied up properly. Like I've got an oil cooler line there, exhaust is just hanging on there. A few things I've just bolted on very loosely. Being mindful that we may have had to pull this thing apart still. And I was a bit concerned about that, that we've done so much internal work that something could be wrong. Uh, so I didn't bother putting on the alternator and the um, AC compressor and things like that and hooking up the water pump and all that. It just didn't need all that just yet. I doubt what that huge rattle was. <laughs> it was this, the piece of tape had tiny little pinhole in it and it's just, they're rattling like crazy. But yeah, super, super happy with this test run. This is something massive I just wanted to get out of the way. Now we can push this thing to the side. We can get the 1FZ, uh, 105 series Land Cruiser in, pull that 1FZ out. Uh, make room for this and get some funds up to uh, get the adapter kit and all that from ASL mods and bolt that thing into the cruiser. So whether that is the late, uh, the next video or whether I delve into the wiring and do a standalone because there's been so many questions about that of how to wire this thing up. I haven't really done a big breakdown yet of it. I did a bit of a wiring video uh, a few months ago, but I want to delve into that too and show you guys how to wire it up. There's a few things you've got to sort of think about. Uh, the goal was to get this thing in and running at least in the cruiser and maybe putting around by the end of the year. Uh, I've got a fair bit of other stuff going on so hopefully I can uh, still manage that. I've tried to be as informative as I can with these videos but if you've got any more questions leave them down below. I try and answer them as best as I can. Be sure to check out the new merch on the store that just helps keep builds like this going. Hit the subscribe button notification bell so you guys don't miss out on anything. I'll catch you in the next one.